The New York Times complains that the damages weren't enough. This past Sunday, the New York Times published an article by Hollywood correspondent Brooks Barnes titled after hashtag MeToo Reckoning, a fear Hollywood is regressing. The article bemoaned the small amount of damage the campaign against sexual misconduct has caused and called for more to be done. Numerous lives and careers in music, film, and the media have been destroyed by five years of the fight against sorcerers for sexual misconduct. The campaign undermined democratic rights, including the presumption of innocence, and cultivated an environment where intimidation and self-censorship were in charge. A number of women and Afro-Americans who had previously been given preference have undoubtedly improved their financial circumstances by joining the film industry's backroom. In the meanwhile, due to economically accelerated processes facilitated by the Academy, the overall caliber of Hollywood films has declined to an even lower level. The blockbuster phenomenon is more prevalent than ever. More than ever, independent voices that existed have been marginalized. According to Barnes, the Bouleversant hashtag Moi Aussie campaign did nothing for the vast majority of women. Since the 1970s, there has been an explosive increase in the income disparities between men and women. Continue to grow, a process that will only become more pronounced with the rise in inflation and attacks on the right to profit. The new Harvey Weinstein trial in Los Angeles, the upcoming release of She Said, which explores the origins of the 2017 hashtag Moi Aussie campaign, and the 40 strong ticket sales for the film The Woman King, an absurd historical fabrication made in the service of identity politics, are what pique Barnes and the Times' interest. The article by Barnes expresses concern about potential processes that could prevent the unimpeded enrichment of the couches that the Times speaks to and for, and is undoubtedly intended in part to strengthen support within the Democratic Party's base and the middle class on the eve of the November election. The way Barnes approached the group is an illustration of the group's egoism. In contrast to diversity, equity, and inclusion, new problems have taken a higher priority, he complains. These issues include the generalized cost reduction while the box office continues to be challenging. There is always a risk that those who have recently been included would find themselves excluded if economic conditions deteriorate. Nothing about the threat of war, the threat of fascism, systematic attacks against democratic rights, or even the quality of life enters Barnes' calculations. Suppendant. While some of the men who had been put on edge by accusations of bad behavior are working again, anonymous women who had been bribed for prominent positions and shown as examples of triumphants of a new era have been ejected. After developing this last theme, Barnes laments the lack of more generalized punishment for the males who have been accused of bad conduct. What an offensive comment, fitting for the anti-communist purges of the 1950s. People who are just accused are no longer banned in the absence of a legal proceeding. In actuality, the juries in recent legal cases involving actors Johnny Depp and Kevin Spacey were shown to be very careful to consider the facts and not the allegations of the vaguest type. Four years later, Barnes continues, after a $22 million settlement in which he denied committing a reprehensible act, he had at least three films scheduled. Neither Depp nor Franco have ever been charged with a crime, much less found guilty. However, the two men were not banished as is proper. The Times piece unavoidably assumes that race and gender make up the social axis around which everything revolves. It was never anticipated that Hollywood movies like Less Times Moderns, Less Raisins de la Kohler, Citizen Kane, and The Best Years of Our Lives would speak to the situations and concerns of the vast majority of the active people. People don't look to the poor ticket sales for a Brad Pitt movie to get the conclusion that no one wants to watch older white men on screen. This overt racism permeates the whole Times piece. Barnes expresses concern that the wrong kind of movies would become popular again while making an impressive allusion to the fact that the studios have also started to take more risks with the content. That is, they have chosen to create works that might offend the racial and genre purists. It mentions the Netflix Marilyn Monroe biopic Blonde, which some have called exploitative and misogynistic, as well as Trey Parker and Matt Stone's live musical comedy about the reparations related to the slave trade. The politically incorrect creative minds behind South Park and the Book of Mormon, auto-censure and censure are commonplace today. Barnes wants to dispel any notion that a Sir Correction, as suggested by one of the people he interviewed, would be produced in 2017 and beyond. He quotes an anonymous source who claimed that at the beginning of the campaign against sexual misconduct, we all lived in a state of complete terror. This fear still exists, but it has subsided. There is more room for gray, more benefit from doubt and more reluctance to judge the precipitation that was evident at the peak of hashtag Moi Aussie. The Times is engaged in a battle against preconceptions. There is more room for gray, more benefit from doubt, and more reluctance to judge the precipitation that was evident at the peak of hashtag Moi Aussie. The Times is fighting against such notions. The sexual abuse in Hollywood, the casting couch, and related phenomena are falsely presented by Barnes and the Times as the result of white men's dominance. As we noted in October 2017, 
This kind of sexual favor extortion is not only a product of Hollywood, it is a product of American business and corporate culture as a whole, and it is a product of the brutality of social relations in the United States. That is the reality of capitalism. We have acknowledged that sexual assaults and coercion were extensive, declared under all the unbelievable circumstances in America when the weak find themselves at the mercy of the powerful. The WSWS also warned in 2017 that the extreme right has consistently been at the center of sexual scandals. Reen de vaguement progressist ni sortira from all that, we write, unrevived production code, restrictions on freedom in movies and performances, and increased authority for named and self-appointed critics are just a few of the issues that could arise at the conclusion of this despicable process. The monopoly of wealth and power, which is the root of real abuse and crime, is still in place.